Well, my friends, I am again standing in front of a really gorgeous and unique setup. One of those ones where you might think it's impractical or how do you do it? Well, I got Billy with me today and Billy is the guy that takes an idea, the creative sales position, the creative, we can do this and says, well, no, we can't, or yes, we can, or <laughs> let me see if I can make it happen. So there's a ton of expectations out there, Billy, and we always want to be polite when someone reaches out to us with something that seems really impractical or impossible and go, look, here's how we can do it. Let me show you how we can make this work. And you're given that burden all the time. Yeah. So when a project like this, as unique as it is, comes into play, how do you go about making that process a reality? Well, uh, really it all starts in CAD. So first thing, customer comes to us with a process. They say, hey, we want X, Y, Z done kind of lay it out. They always have their grand ideas. Then we kind of start putting things in uh, Inventor, kind of laying things out, kind of seeing what kind of equipment can handle the different processes and uh, just kind of go from there. And then after we get more of a conceptual uh, 3D layout of everything, then we start going into simulation software, kind of laying that out and just keep really just keep building it out from there. There's a lot of projects out there that well, might repeat from time to time, but you live in a world where there's not a whole lot of repeat. No. <laughs> you guys at IC Automation are kind of the masterminds behind, give us something, we'll, we can probably do that for you. Mm -hmm. So something like this has never been done before. What were some of the complications that you had to overcome to turn this into a reality? Well, for starters, we have a 730 kilogram fiberglass pole that's up to 50 foot long. So it's a good place to start. <laughs> yeah. So just the stability of it, uh, designing the tool here to, you know, make sure that the part would be secure, safe, but still move at appropriate speeds to kind of get the job done in a mm -hmm. timely manner. Uh, that was really the first start. Um, we worked a lot with Fanic going back and forth on uh, different di uh, design constraints. Um, and yeah, just that. And then we have um, fanning motion controller, just kind of coordinating all that to make sure that our support system was going to be strong enough. Everything was going to hold up to 24 seven production of handling these poles and uh, doing it as quickly as possible. Two things that were brought up to me that I think are worth recognizing in this conversation as well was space because you purposely picked a head to my knowledge that has the ability to spin at a certain angle instead of having to go all the way around like yeah. this. And then safety was a big issue as well. So there's so many different levels of safety as well, isn't there? Yeah, so this robot is one of the first in America to actually be utilized here. And this robot can actually go up and over itself with this wrist. Um, that was the original concept. However, in practicality, it did not work out that well. So we ended up finding the safest option was to just spin the pole. And that's really because of the design criteria for the tooling for it to handle the load in both directions and still be able to handle the different sizes because we got poles that range from 13 feet and about eight inches in diameter to 40 inches in diameter and 50 feet long. So to try to get all that encompassed with a gripper mechanism that was strong enough, safe enough, and able to handle the loads in every direction just didn't really work out. And that was something that, you know, it took a lot of uh, revision just over and over trying to, trying to make it work. And it was kind of like one of the things you were saying in the beginning there with expectations and the original theory. And it, it looked great on paper, but in reality, it just really just didn't make sense to do. This was a safer alternative and it's just a, a better design in, in theory and in, in practicality sense because of that. So. Well, that's why we bring you on camera, my friend, because something that looks good on paper needs to be tested, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's yeah. why we everything have you looks here. great on paper. Yeah, everything, <laughs> yeah. It, just, the way I color, it doesn't even look great, but some yeah. people have better well, designs yeah. than I do. Well, Billy, I appreciate your time on camera today. I know how much fun it can be to be on camera, but I know how much more fun it is to put these things together, <laughs> especially when your sales teams come to you and say, Billy, can we do this? And you go, oh goodness, yeah. but you can, you're brilliant like that. And IC Automation is known for that. So if you are anywhere in this country, anywhere in the US, and you're looking for an integrator to help you do things that might just seem like a dream right now, reach out to IC Automation, give them a call, reach out to my friend Billy right here, and he will make sure that everything that you guys think can happen can actually happen. And if it can't, he'll figure out where it can, right, Billy? Yep. Appreciate you, my friend. Right. Thank you so much for your time Thank and you. joining me on camera. Yeah. Thank you.